So today we're gonna go ahead and talk about how to make your guns have less recoil because obviously there's two factors going on. You have your overall recoil pattern and then you have Bloom, which uh, True Game Data has a good video on Bloom if you wanna go check that out. I'll link that near the top of the description. But in this video, I'm gonna be focusing primarily on the recoil pattern and how to mitigate any side to side wobble as well as the vertical part of it. And as you go through the attachments, there's several that impact recoil control as well as accuracy. And then there's usually like one, maybe two attachments that actually help horizontal recoil control. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at. And once I was done with the testing, I was able to copy some of those fundamentals and apply them to other weapons and notice a significant improvement. Although some weapons might have one attachment that is a little bit better than the ones that we're gonna look at, or maybe it doesn't even exist. So you kind of got to opt for something that's there or go with no attachment at all. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're brand new, wanna find your way back, subscribe with notifications on so first off we're taking a look at the muzzles and you can see the base STG on the left in blue and then I go ahead and copy that all the way through and you can see the orange is the recoil pattern for the rest of the muzzles we're not gonna spend up a ton of time on these because there are a ton of attachments I'm gonna go ahead and kind of break down kind of my overall process so you kind of have an idea of what I was doing so I was measuring the height from the bottom dot to the top dot and then the furthest left dot to the furthest right dot and that's how I determine the height versus the width and a lot of times what happens is if you compress the height, sometimes it'll end up going a little bit further left and right. So even though something might do recoil control, it actually might widen your actual recoil pattern because you're compressing it and it's not tightening up those spacing between it. So that's what we're looking at through each of these. We'll go ahead and look through the various ones so you kind of have an idea of what those look like. Next up are the under barrels. And you can see that the under barrels kind of do stuff. The carver's kind of leaning ahead of the pack when it comes to this one. The ready grip actually makes it worse. Um, and then let's go ahead and keep on going along. We also have the rear grips and you can see a lot of going on with the rear grips, but the polymer grip ends up taking the lead in my opinion. When you're looking at all of these, this is what the recoil pattern actually looks like. And it's almost night and day difference when you're comparing these. It doesn't look like you're getting a huge difference, even though there are differences as we'll see, this one just kind of comes out head and shoulders above the rest. Now we can take a look at the stocks and the stocks It's pretty obvious that if you go with the precision or the weighted, you're gonna get the best or improvement here. Tactical looks like it's kind of helping out a little bit. Obviously the folding is going to make it worse and the remove stock. So those may be great for close quarters or sniper support options if the recoil is a little bit more manageable. But at range, you're definitely going to notice that your recoil is increasing by that amount. And here are all the optics that say they help your recoil or your accuracy in any way. And you can kind of go through and get a good idea. It looks like the 4X looks like it's doing a little bit more than some of the others. You can see the 2.5 up here, which is kind of the most popular and then as we kind of come through it does look like the 3.25 is kind of doing the most even at a glance and obviously night vision looks kind of good too but obviously then you got to deal with night vision so what we do is we take a look at all those we plug in the data and just kind of looking at the numbers you can see where it's green and those are the larger improvements versus the reds in these individual groupings and that's the key part you got to look at here is it is these individual groupings that we're looking at um, and not the whole like because these are competing against each other. So the best one would probably be for recoil control is probably the MX silencer, but that's gonna end up hurting your side to side a little bit more, so maybe that's not why you would go with it. But if we look over here, we can see the Mercury silencer, the cord muzzle brake, and the F8 stabilizer all kind of benefiting. And I think this is what's kind of causing a lot of people to lean towards that F8 stabilizer because you're getting almost 9% improvement to your vertical. But not by having a minor difference in terms of that side to side. And I think that's what's drawing a lot of people towards that. Um, but personally, I would say go with the Mercury Silencer as a general conclusion there. Obviously, it depends on the weapon, but that is kind of what the numbers are pointing to. The Carver ends up the same exact thing. Head and shoulders above the rest of the pack, but the Strife Angled does the most in improving the side to side recoil. You can see it moves it from 80 uh, pixels all the way down to 64, which is 6% improvement. And that's one of the better attachments across the board. And so if there's a weapon that swings hard side to side, the strife angled might be the way to go, uh, even if it's not gonna necessarily help your recoil out that much. But the fact that it's helping in this area, you can kind of use that to go, how I'm gonna go and control this specific weapon, regardless of the weapon it is. If it's only straight vertical, it would be a waste of an attachment to use that one. And you can see the carver comes out significantly ahead. 
And then over here, we saw it in the patterns, the polymer grip, it does tighten it up quite a bit by about 30%. The pine tar, still pretty good. Stippled, very good as well. Um, but you can see these, those do have negative aspects that they're going to do to the width of that recoil pattern. We go to the stock, precision and weighted, almost identical. The other three, you would assume they're going to make them worse because they say worse, worse, worse. And then this one, it does help the recoil a little bit, but the, the penalty to the width isn't all that worth it. And then when it comes to optics, there's really a lot you can go off of here. You can take screenshots if you want to kind of compare it. Obviously, as we get more time to test more weapons, there's probably gonna be one that works better on this specific weapon. But overall, it kind of pushes me to lean towards this um, 3.25 custom um, or the night vision obviously that would be a way to go but it's looking like the flipped is a very good option as you can see here and then we also have the the vdd barrel which it's the only barrel that helps some other guns do have two barrels so that might be a scenario that we talked about earlier where you try one you see how you like it, you swap to the other and you just see which one you prefer um, in that scenario whereas a lot of these Attachments are copy and paste the same way we've seen with Modern Warfare and Cold War where you just kind of use that same attachment because it solves the problem that you're trying to solve. And then lastly, you could kind of see how they stack up against each other uh, in terms of using the low recoil build, uh, which is all of these ones with the little blue thing and then having these individual optics. And you can see the 3.25 does a really good job here. They're all gonna reduce your horizontal significantly or the width. So the, the Slate 2.5 is a good option if you like the optical zoom. The 3.2 or the 2.5, which a lot of people are using, isn't even the best option, but it is a good option um, considering if you stack up all the other attachments the right way. Also a quick side note, if we go ahead and use this color coding for all of them, the attachment that probably has the most value if like you don't wanna pass up on is probably the polymer. You can see it's 29%, it stacks up pretty heavy there. Um, the stock, so if those are two attachments you wanna rock with, and then an optic that pretty much you have to, and then the barrel, cause you can kinda see how that lines up. So if you wanna sacrifice the muzzle, the other one, you get a little bit more flexibility with how you wanna build your build based off of those variables there. But now let's go ahead and take a look at how they stack up on the recoil block. So these are how the optics look while using the STG with those individual attachments that you see there. And you can see that the 4X, um, the 2.5X, the Slate 2.5 and the 3.25X are all helping out considerably, but you're seeing some significantly easier patterns to probably control for this Slate as well as the 4X. So just something to consider when you're carrying this into other builds. So just kind of use these fundamentals to build a lot of your long range builds. If you're not able to control the recoil at that point, that's probably not the best option for a long range option, especially since a lot of the attachments that do stack properly, they are accounting for bloom as well as recoil control, as well as horizontal recoil control. You're kind of getting the best of everything to make it as accurate as possible given the information because it can be difficult at times. I tried this on several weapons without even really looking at all the attachments that they had available. I just said, I'm just gonna use the Mercury silencer. I'm gonna use the Carver 4 grip. I'm gonna use the polymer grip. If they have a, a recoil barrel that matches what the, the STG does, I'm gonna copy that. If they have a stock, I'm copying that. And then you kind of just build it out and it felt like I was able to get low recoil on a lot of other weapons without even thinking about the attachment. So try it for yourself. Let me know how it goes. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're brand new and want to find your way back, double check. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.